Penny Hardaway's at the pinnacle of his game, the peak of his skills in a still blossoming career, carrying the magic with 29 to still another victory and a Monday night win over the Warriors. Rookie forward David Vaughn, too, rode the crest of his first significant playing time to newfound confidence in the Golden State triumph. And tonight, expansion Vancouver marks its arena debut. Led by guard Greg Anthony, the Grizzlies play their first season in the NBA and perform on Sunshine Network. It's NBA Orlando Magic Basketball. Tonight, live from Central Florida, welcome to the arena and a Thanksgiving holiday of hoops. The Vancouver Grizzlies playing for the first time in their expansion history on the parquet court and face the top team in the Eastern Conference and the Magic. A happy Thanksgiving from all of us at Sunshine. Welcome to the NBA. I'm Paul Kennedy. Orlando thankful that it has won eight of its first 10 to open the year and tonight looking to feast upon Vancouver. And here with the play-by-play -play call, the voice of the Magic, Chip Carey, and the Goose, Jack Gibbons. Hello, guys. Hey there, hey, Paul. Paul. Good to have you along here tonight, and hopefully we won't have a turkey of a ball game. It's the Vancouver Grizzlies, an expansion ball club in town, taking on the Atlantic Division-leading Orlando team at 8-2. and two. And, Jack, these got to be tough games for championship-caliber ball clubs to get up for, but you better beware, Vancouver has played very well of late. Well, what they've done, Chip, is they've played hard every game out, and, of course, that's what Brian Winters wants his team to do. And if you think back to the early days of this Orlando franchise, you'll remember a lot of close ball games and really not so much because of what the Magic did, but how the other team played. So the Magic must be ready here tonight and make sure they're able to step up for this challenge because Vancouver wants to try to steal one here tonight. Jack, I think the Magic Ball Club so far this year has played very consistently. And one guy in particular, besides Penny Hardaway, really personifies that. That's been Dennis Scott. He's been marvelous. Well, you know, we haven't talked a lot about Dennis. Um, every night, it seems, Dennis continues to shoot the ball well. He's made 10 of his last 17 shots from behind the three-point line. And he had five stills in the game the other night against Golden State in addition to the points and the rebounds. So Dennis is doing everything. Another guy that we're happy to see back in the lineup tonight is Horace Grant, who set out the last game. The Magic was still able to win that game against Golden State, but they weren't nearly as sharp on either end of the floor as they would be with Horace Grant in there. Well, Goose, the Grizzlies won their first two games in their NBA history since they've lost eight games in a row. And with an expansion team, it's familiar faces in altogether different places. And they've got some talent on this ball club. Well, they do. It's very difficult to put it together. It's going to be very difficult for a long time for this team. Greg Anthony is one guy that has started to play much, much better basketball over the last six games or so. 18 points a ball game, and he is leading this team. A guy that we've known here in Orlando, we had a chance to have him on this team and watch him play for a couple of years. Anthony Avent has yet to really find a way to figure into this team. Hasn't played but three of the ten ball games so far for this Vancouver team. But they want to play him more, and we'll see more minutes tonight, I'm sure. And beware, Vancouver, the sixth best defensive team in the league, so the Magic had best be sharp, especially in the early going. It's the Magic and the Grizzlies starting lineups come your way next. The NBA on Sunshine Network is brought to you by Gatorade. Who remind you, if you're not standing on the sidelines, you're going to get thirsty. Life's a sport. Drink it up. By Cooper Tires. For one of the best tires on the road today, by quality American-made Cooper Tires. See your yellow pages for the Cooper dealer nearest you. By Great Western Bank's family of companies, now backed by over $44 billion in assets, 100 years strong. Great Western will always be there. By your local Chevrolet Geo dealers. If you haven't driven a Chevrolet today, you haven't driven today's Chevrolet. That's a genuine Chevrolet. And by Southwest Airlines, just plain smart. It's the Vancouver Grizzlies and the Orlando Magic for the first time ever. And let's take a look at tonight's lineups. You can imagine yourself in a Mercury, a Trail Lincoln Mercury, Central Florida Lincoln Mercury, and a Longwood Lincoln Mercury. Here's Paul Porter. Eight from Wake Forest, number 17, Chris King. At center, seven foot from Creighton, number double zero, Benoit Benjamin. And one guard, six one from Nevada, Las Vegas, number two, Greg Anthony. And at the other guard, six four from East Carolina, number 30, Blue Edwards. 
The trainer of the Grizzlies is Troy Wenzel. Assistant coaches Jimmy Powell, Rex Hughes, and Lionel Hollins. And the head coach of the Grizzlies is Brian Winters. Tonight's J.C. Penny starter honorary ball kids are Joseph Robinson and Mark Tomlinson. Thanks for helping us out tonight. Trainer of the Magic is Lenny Courier. The assistant coaches, Richie Adubato, Dree Rollins, and Tom Sterner. So the Magic and the, and the Grizzlies the are ready to go Hill. here tonight. The Magic come in at 8-2. and two. The Grizzlies, the opposite, at 2-8. and eight. Goose, let's take a look at our keys to the game. They're brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Just plain smart. Chip, I think the Magic first need to force some turnovers here. This team will turn the basketball over, so the defensive pressure must be there. If you can force some turnovers, they don't work as hard at getting back on defense, so some easy baskets should be there for the Magic. The bench has been playing extremely well, particularly guys like Joe Wolf and the rookie David Vaughn has, came in, has come in and played well. Donald Royer, Brian Shaw continues to give the Magic support from over there. So let's hope they can continue to do that tonight. And your matchups you mentioned in our session with Paul down at the other end of the floor that uh, Greg Anthony's the kind of court guard that gives the Magic trouble his penetration and he does not turn the ball over very often. Yeah you're right one guy we haven't seen a whole lot of is Chris King. Last season he spent uh, the year in Greece played over there but he is active around the uh, around the basket as you look at Brian Hill on the Magic bench getting prepared for this ball game. But Chris King a real good rebounder good offensive rebounder also. And Brian Winters in his first season as the Vancouver head coach. Of course, you'll remember he was Lenny Wilkins' right-hand man. And as an NBA player, was involved in the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar trade that sent him from Milwaukee to the Los Angeles Lakers. In fact, Brian was an all-star in the NBA as well. As you see, our two officials were ready to go. A big crowd on hand. Don't know if it's sold out, but I would imagine it would be. And we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving Eve as the Grizzlies come away with the basketball. Nifty looking turquoise ish colored uniforms with that bear logo and the claw fully extended on the uniform. Blue Edwards, a wide open shot, won't go, rebound. Inside Kenny Gaddis in that strip, and the Magic come away with the rock here at home. Well, Dennis Scott had five steals in the game against Golden State. Gets a hand on that one. He probably will not get credit for it, but he made another good defensive play. Horace misfires as he's back after missing the Golden State game because of injury. Greg Anthony and a three-second call against Benoit Benjamin. Our Jacobs and Goodman personal injury report is brought to you by Jacobs and Goodman. We're, we're, we're there when you need us. Shaq Jeff Brooks Thompson. Injured listed today with back problems. Brooks had to take an MRI on his aching lower back. And Gerald Wilkins had some back surgery as well. That's a big, big loss for Vancouver. They were counting on his point production this season. 
Nick Anderson uh, won't go, couldn't get his own miss. And Greg Anthony leads a Vancouver break. He's bumped off position for a moment. That's Chris King out of Wake Forest. They're starting small forward. And he lays it in, and Vancouver's in front two to nothing. And that's that active body I was telling you about, Chip. Very good at coming along the baseline. And there's the block right there. Active body. And he runs out after the block. Challenges cut. Keck lays it up and in. Chris King. Boy, Chris King out of Wake Forest. Pat Williams on the bottom. And the Grizzlies are in front four to nothing here. Minute and a half into the ball game. A hustling bunch. What they lack in talent, they more than make up for with Hart. As Penny is fouled on the baseline. And that's on Kenny Gaddison. In their last loss against the New York Knicks on Sunday, the Knicks won that ball game 98-93. That game was tied 93-93 with a minute to go, and the Knicks closed out the scoring in that ball game. So that's an indication of uh, how scrappy this team is. Uh, as is the case a lot of times when, as an expansion team, you have to produce down the stretch. You really don't know who to go to. You haven't had time, particularly early here, to establish that player. And that's what happened to Vancouver in that game. Nick Anderson almost stole it away, but popped it back to Blue Edwards. 4-2, Vancouver has the lead. Addison in the low post. Turn around on Horace, 6-2. Well, you talk about a guy whose return from injury is nearly miraculous. Kenny Gaddison certainly fits that category. Remember that awful injury last year, the cracked vertebra? Couldn't feel his hands for a couple of weeks? Well, he, um, he thought at one point his career was over. I mean, he said, I will, it, it, it will be all right if I, if I never play this game again. He said, the one thing in life I want is when my kid climbs up on my lap, I want to be able to fill him. And, and, he for, couldn't and for, a while. for a while, he couldn't. He said, I just want to be able to know he's there. So that uh, brought him to reality very quickly as to the importance in uh, basketball as, as opposed to everything else in life. Penny in a double team, spins and hits anyway. Well, a ho-hum 29-point game against Golden State the other night. He scored all four magic points here in the first quarter. Gaddison shows the ball, takes it hard, flips it up and in. You know, he's always played well against this, this Magic team, though, Chip. You think back to his days in Charlotte, he's always been a real tough matchup problem. Contact misses the outside jump shot. And why is that? Well, he, he can play two or three different side positions. He used to play against Shaquille O'Neal when Shaq was at the post position. Lou Edwards. Partially blocked and contact the loose ball. He played against Shaquille at the center position and then before Horace Grant got oh. here, nice pass Penny Hardaway. We just had a hard time matching up with them. 8-6, Vancouver has the lead. They've hit four of their first nine shots and already have seven rebounds in the game. Does the Vancouver team. Blue Edwards out of East Carolina. Utah with Milwaukee with Boston and John Konkak with two hands on Benjamin is guilty of his first personal foul. His first, first team foul. Get a look here at that pass from Penny Hardaway to Horace Grant here. The no look pass Horace Grant throws it down. That's another look chip. One of the things I was talking about as the keys. The Magic will be able to run some fast breaks here if they can get turnovers and get it out with the advantage on the other end. Well, so far, Vancouver only one turnover in the game, and the expansion team out rebounding Orlando 7-2. And more importantly, they lead 10-6 on the scoreboard. Dennis against Chris King. Draws a crowd. Around the horn she goes. Horace Grant pulls up a five to shoot and hits. Horace with five double-doubles on the year. Has hit two of his first three shots. Blue Edwards drives and is fouled. No backdoor help was coming, and Nick grabs Blue and says, Don't do that to me. It's almost Thanksgiving. Uh, the problem on that play for Nick, he saw the pick and roll coming. He jumped out on top to try to force Blue to the baseline, looked up, no help was there as Horace Grant had to clear out, and he was forced to foul. Goose, in situations like this, and you mean no disrespect toward any ball club, as I said, they're one of 29 in the league. 
But for the Magic, is the most important opponent tonight themselves, their own mind, and getting up and getting prepared for this game? Because they do look somewhat sluggish here to start. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that, Chip. Um, you know, you think about an expansion team, you know, as you look at this Vancouver, te Vancouver team, they've lost eight straight ball games, and against the Magic at the top of their game, there's no way that this team will be able to beat them. So the Magic have to find a way to get there. A whistle on the play. Dennis Scott hits the shot. And Chris King, I think, is called for number two, and he'll have to leave the ball game, I would imagine. Brian Winters looking things over down his bench. King has been his best player at the start of the game. You'll see him with the straight arm on Dennis Scott right there. Not much contact. I, I know you're supposed to call that foul, and I guess it's good. Kotkak with a hard drive in the finger roll. No, Horace Grant's follow. That won't fall. He will, however, and he'll get up and go to the line. Two on Gaddison now. You'll see Horace Grant follow up the play. John Conkak putting the ball on the on the floor. Not something you see happen very often. Horace Grant had that rebound under control. Two hands on it. And Kitty, Kitty Gaddison with the foul. So Horace uh, active here, as you would expect. A little surprised he's not wearing at least a sleeve on that knee. He always uh, did wear that one sleeve on his right knee, and uh, it was his left knee that he banged on the court. So the Magic pull within two now. Greg Anthony aspires to be a U.S. Senator someday. Delightful young man from Nevada, Las Vegas. Gaddison faces up, knocks it down. Well, they're shooting it well right now. They've had since Sunday night here in Orlando. And Vancouver, 6 of 11. Now they, these guys wore out Walt Disney World. They wore out a couple of the local golf courses. They've been enjoying the beautiful weather. That's open. Long go. King the rebound. He had a run out. Benjamin couldn't hit it. Now Anthony pushes it up. Up tempo. Hard drive all the way to the goal. No one stopped him. And Greg Anthony has his first deuce of the game. And that's what you spoke of in the open. You've, you've, you've got to find him fast. Because if you don't, he's going to do what he did that time. Push the ball. 15-9, Vancouver the lead. Hardaway picks himself free, finds contact, spinning on Edwards, and he stole it right away. Now the run-out chance for Anthony left wing. And I guess he turned the ball over. I don't know what he did, but a timeout is called. 6-16 left. The Magic take a break. They trail 15-9, and we'll be back after this from Red Lobster Restaurants. 15-9, our score, 6-16 left here in the first quarter. Vancouver off to a good start. And this is not an NBA travel, but they called it that way. Well, they said it got caught on his hip right there. Hmm. But... I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. What can I say? Here's a look at our upcoming schedule the rest of the month. Brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Magic travel to Minnesota to Washington over the weekend. Then the Detroit Pistons in town Monday. And the Magic get a break. No Joe Dumars for that game. Joe is injured. And then the Triple J Ranch. The Dallas Mavericks are in town to close out the November schedule. 15-9, Vancouver the lead. Penny, turnaround jumper, go. Rebound, Horace Grant inside. That won't fall. Left hand tap, right hand tap. Neither one of those go. Still loose, and Vancouver comes up. Good effort for the Magic. Anthony, good pass to King. Two hand reverse hammer. Vancouver taking it to the Magic here at the start. 17-9. And a half minutes left opening quarter. Nick backs it down against Blue Edwards. Torres Grant, 19 foot jumper, shot at 20, long board to Nick. Magic and anemic, three out of 13 from the field at the start of the game, and now get it back off the deflection. Three for 13 of the Magic, Vancouver, eight for 13 in the game. There's your difference. Yeah, that's the problem you have with uh, playing against a team that is not as superior. 
contact, hesitates. Now they dare him to shoot. And he missed. And Nick gets a lucky bounce. The Vancouver team fought over it, and Nick laid it in. Right place at the right time was Nick Anderson, double smooth up off the bench of Vancouver. Anthony again tries to thread the needle. Horace knocks that away. Long run out chance for Nick against Blue Edwards. Saves, lays it in. Another one of those defensive plays, Chip, I'm talking about it. Gets you opportunities against a team that might not work as hard getting back on defense as some other teams. 17-13. King against Dennis Scott. Edwards turns off the screen. Nope, now they're starting to cool off. The Magic's starting to run. Four-point Vancouver game. Nick goes to work. Horace Grant rolls. Oh, nice pass to nice. Cutcat. Real nice pass. Good luck, Horace Grant. Now Brian Winters wants to slow it down a little bit here. 4.15 left, 17.15 Vancouver. Anthony nearly traveled that time. Two big men on the blocks. Here's Big Benoit Benjamin. Turnaround jumper. No. Rebound. Gaddison against Grant. Spins. That swatted away. He thought he was hit. All ball there. Penny Hardaway, stutter step, dribble, finger, oh, won't go, but he'll go to the line. Great play. Good recognition, Penny Hardaway taking the ball to the basket. Greg Anthony picks up the foul, but that's because Penny Hardaway was aggressive going to the hole. Could have been easy and backed off and still trying to find himself a couple of points. So Anthony Avon is into the game. First time. He's not gotten a whole lot of playing time. He's not played in seven Vancouver games, Jack. He's played just 38 minutes on the year. That's somewhat surprising to me. I always felt that if he got playing time, he was going to be a productive player. That wasn't going to happen here with the Magic. You know, he's had to learn the offense, learn everything new. Anthony again turns it over. Now the Magic run out. Penny has Blue Edwards to beat. Keeps the ball on his hip. Edwards the block, but the foul as well. But Anthony Avent is, is still learning the system in Vancouver. Went through most of the camp here with the Magic and was traded late, right before the regular season began. So he's had to start all over virtually, and that might be a reason why he hasn't had much playing time. Penny. For the year, 82% of the line. That's his first miss tonight. He's four out of five. Penny second in the league in scoring, just behind Michael Jordan, 27.6 points per game. That's eight per game over his career average. He's shooting a hefty 52% from the field, still averaging six assists. Talk about a guy that might be player of the month. He might be the man. He's been unbelievable. And that's particularly true of the Magic. Or to win this ball game and then close out on a on a high note. But yeah, he's played extremely well. Edwards again squares up this time and hits all bottom. Uh, Nick Anderson wanted the moving screen on Anthony Avon as he came along the baseline. He's talking to the official about that right now. 312 left. Vancouver by one. Dennis Scott camps. Can't hit. Rebound Benjamin. That's 11 rebounds for the Vancouver team. And King in transition is fouled by Penny Hardaway. And now Byron Scott. Well, let's see if he's allowed to check in. Now he's going to come in. coming for King. I think so. So Vancouver will get small. And they will, in doing that, get very quick as you look at the backcourt. That will move Blue Edwards when Byron Scott comes in. That moves Blue Edwards down to the small forward position. Working against Dennis Scott. Chris King out of weight, 10 points, five rebounds, just 39% from the field, but he's been consistent with his scoring. He's given Brian Winters about 10 points a night, 11 points a night. And I would imagine on an expansion team, that's really what you want instead of a guy exploding for 21 night and five the next. If he can give him 10, 11 points, at least the coach knows he'll get that from one player on the floor. 2018, Vancouver has the lead. And it's Scott, 4 3. Yes. More threes than five NBA teams. Vancouver, one of them, has Dennis Scott. That was his 33rd of the year. 
with two and a half to play. Had made 10 of seven of his last 17 shots over the last three ball, two or three ball games. King coming catches, into this. Cuts. As it blocked through the foul. I'm sorry. Did not mean to interrupt you. And a timeout taken by the Grizzlies. 224 left. Horace Grant's called for the foul, and the Magic have a one point lead. 21 20 is the score here with 224 left in the first period. Horace Grant will find John Conkak wide open under the basket. A little wraparound pass. John Conkak lays that one in. And then Dennis Scott, who has been really lighting it up from behind the three point line. You watch him here. He comes out. Good rotation on that basketball as he lets it go and gets himself three points there. Well, the Orlando Talent Network can liven up any occasion. Let Curly Neal, the Magic Dancers, Stuff, or Jack and I make your party, business meeting, or convention something to remember. Contact the Magic Talent Network at 649-2268 to make your next event magical. Chris King now off to a good start. Eight first quarter points. And now nine. And Vancouver back in front, 22 to 21. Magic opened up a new outlet for the Magic Fanatic at the Fashion Square Mall. It's Christmas season right around the corner, so head over there and pick up your Magic gear. Dennis can't hit. Avent fumbles it out of bounds. But Vancouver gets the ball. Now the official reverses himself and says, my mistake. Well, the ball hit Anthony Avent's foot, and maybe the official thought Avent was still a part of this Orlando Magic team. Called it the other way, but then changed his mind and said, no. Belongs to the other Magic. Ryan Shaw and Joe Wolf are into the lineup for the first time. Byron Scott now checks in for Vancouver. Two minutes left, first quarter. Dennis goes to work against Blue Edwards. Wolf handles, now feeds Dennis. Ten to shoot, plenty of time. Wolf got his man in the air, partially blocked as he fired it up. And Vancouver heads the other way. Byron Scott, who will ever forget. Game one against Indiana in the playoffs two years ago. Benjamin uh, missed the bunny. And Joe Wolf jumps in and forces the jump ball. Well, I remember that shot. Oh. <laughs> so does everybody else. Well, I think uh, Benoit Benjamin was a little surprised no travel was called on this play and blew the layup because of that. And Joe Wolf tied him up. Lou Edwards to save and does to Brian Shaw, however. Now the Magic run out. Bryant challenges Avent, fires it up, cannot hit. Avent the rebound. Boy, Bryant Shaw's shot has been missed. And it's not all jumpers. He's missed some layups, too. He's a 31% shooter now. 1.18 left. Yeah, you know, he's uh, a lot of times he's more concerned with looking first to make the pass because he is a good assist guy. And uh, sometimes that shot is the last resort. You know, he, instead of thinking off, offense first, shooting the basketball first. Five to shoot. Contact couldn't handle. Now Dennis Scott, one to shoot. Got it off in time off the iron. Contact taps it out and got it back. Fifteen to shoot now. Brian turns the corner. That's poked out of Harm's way, and Brian Hill makes a nice catch. Brian probably thinking about taking a shot himself. The Magic having a little trouble getting the offense going here in this ball game. Just 21 points against the expansion Vancouver Grizzly. And 30% in the first quarter. Penny spins, fires, misses the rebound. Grabbed by the right Benjamin. He throws an elbow, and that's going to be an elbowing foul. And a technical foul. <laughs> well, uh, you'll see right here as he clears John Conkak out with an elbow right there. And then Benoit Benjamin after that, if you did not see, slammed the ball into the court. It bounced about 40 or 50 feet up into the air, and he gets the technical foul. So the Magic get the ball now. All but five seconds here will be Orlando's possession. Tie game at 22 here in the first quarter. Bounce pass. Oh, what a play. Brian Shaw picked Penny up, 
and he slammed it home on the baseline. Now that's the Brian Shaw I'm talking about. He loves to make that pass. So as long as he comes in and continues to run the show, it's you can overlook the fact that he's not shooting the basketball very well right now. Final shot now for Vancouver. Greg Anthony works his way free for the moment. Avan handles. He'll fire it up, I think. He doesn't see the shot clock, and it won't count. So we're through one quarter here in Orlando. It's a surprising... The Magic lead the expansion. Grizzlies after one will have quarter two right after this. Magic Basketball is brought to you in part by Walt Disney World. Every Friday and Saturday in November, you'll get three extra hours to experience the fun of the Magic Kingdom. Red Dog Beer, bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. You are your own dog. Your local Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. Sitco, the sign of quality. Pizza Hut, home of the new pepperoni and cheese stuffed crust pizza. You'll love the stuff we're made of at Pizza Hut. And by Hoover, nobody gets the dirt like Hoover. Nobody. Chip and the Goose along with Paul Kennedy and our entire Sunshine Network crew. Happy Thanksgiving to you. One quarter in the books here at the Arena. The Magic enjoy a two-point lead, 24-22 over Vancouver. Brian Shaw with the eye contact to Penny Hardaway that leads to the direct basket. Perfect placement of that pass by Brian Shaw. Penny Hardaway out. A.B. in. And that was our slam dunk of the game brought to you by Red Dog. Brian Shaw feeds Joe Wolf. 19 feet now in illegal defense. Magic look at Joe and says, you got to fire that ball up. And that's a, an example of his lack of familiarity with the Magic's offensive set. Yeah, I think so. I, he might have been a little surprised to see himself that wide open. And that uh, expression that you saw on Brian Winter's face, we ought to just name that the expression for the illegal defensive call. It seems like every time it's called, regardless of what team or what situation, that's the expression on the face of the players as well as the coaches. 26-22, the Magic have a two-basket lead now as Avent works against Joe Wolf. Down low it goes to Benoit Benjamin over David Vaughn, and Benjamin has his second field goal. David Vaughn played terrifically in the game against Golden State. Eight points, five rebounds. You made a good point about his game, Jack. It was a situation where when he had to simply react, he played better than having to think out there. Having them play two different spots on the floor. He works against Avent, steps through, has it knocked away. Well, uh, you know, for, for rookies uh, trying to learn a system, there are things that you do and you don't have to think, you just react. And then there are so many things that require uh, thinking. Where you're supposed to be on the floor, what screen you're supposed to make, all those things. A.B. open on the baseline. He's starting to get into better shape, I think. Well, that's a pleasure seeing that shot go down for A.B. He's, uh, he's uh, struggled from the field and not really struggled. He's just had a hard time uh, getting to the open place in time to get the shot, the good shot off. And that's an example of it right there. Made a quick cut to number, get that shot. Excuse me, number five in the Vancouver lineup is Derek Martin as Benjamin has it swatted away. Oh, thought he got all ball, A.B. But no such luck. Number five, Derek Martin is the backup point guard. As you see the foul there. Yeah, I got some arm right there as he came down. Martin, in an interesting story, was waived by Minnesota. Vancouver signed him just before the end of training camp, and Martin beat out former Magic point guard Laterial Green for that final spot on the Vancouver roster. So a lot of fans have wondered where LG was. Vancouver was his last NBA destination. Well, Martin gives him a lot of quickness in the backcourt. He's only 5'11", weighs in at 170 pounds. But he gives him a lot of quickness, does a real good job at getting people shots, breaking down defense. It's uh, one of those uh, players very similar to Darrell Armstrong on this Magic team. Who was activated today as well, as you heard. 10-20 to play until halftime. Close game so far here in Orlando. Vancouver tonight begins a stretch of their next four games against the four most recent expansion teams. They play Charlotte next, then Miami, then Minnesota as the Magic cough it up. 
And Byron Scott, right wing, pulls up for two. All go, rebound, Blue Edwards, blind pass to Avent. Two pump fakes, a fire, and a hit. Anthony, Anthony Avent handles the ball and then lays it in. One point magic game. Big country Bryant Reeves will check in in a moment. Brian Shaw missed the left hand layup, and now I think we've got a goal 10. Well, that was kind of incidental contact to the rim that time, as it might have been Blue Edwards that went up for the block from the weak side, but still, that's the call. You saw him put his hand up through the rim and did shake the basket pretty bad. And good call by this officiating team. By the way, the third official will be added to these uh, replacement officials. The fifth, I think, the fourth or fourth. fifth of December. Byron Scott won't go off the side of the goal. Boy, he had a pretty good look. Now the magic the other way. 9.20 left. A.B. open. Couldn't pull the trigger. Now he does in front of his former teammate. Benjamin, another rebound. That's his sixth of the game. They are a hustling bunch. Wolf slaps Avent. No call. Man. Here's Big Country. Bryant Reeves, their first round pick. Out of Oklahoma State, he was Brooks Thompson's college teammate. You know, he's another uh, one of these guys on this Vancouver team that really has had a hard time getting minutes. He's averaging just 12 minutes a game, and for a guy that was your sixth pick, you would think he would get more minutes, and that's the way David Bond can help this team. Had to make the adjustment because Blue Edwards made the cut in front of him. Good job running the floor, though. Well, Big Country was hurt by the lockout, wasn't able to work out with his new team in the new city. Came in overweight, out of shape, is still that way. But they think he's got a chance in a couple of years to be a very, very good player. And that's what kind of time frame you're looking at, not only for him, of course, but for the Vancouver team. Here's a good pass by Big Country as he gets the ball to Blue Edwards. David Bond with the push. Blue Edwards with the finish. And he gets one free throw. A big country from Gans, Oklahoma. You know what Gans, Oklahoma is? Don't well, know what it is or where it is. Either way. <laughs> no, I don't either. <laughs> Tie game at 30. It's the kind of place I'll bet that if you put a stoplight up, you have to get a, a bond amendment through for a capital improvement. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tiny, tiny place. Joe Wolf. Yes. You know, Joe Wolf has passed up two or three shots already in this game. Well, not to take a chance at those shots, high percentage shots. Event to Bryant Reeves. Oh, shot it short. Had a wide open look, but he missed it. And a 32 30 magic game. Nick Anderson is at the scores table. He'll check in a moment. Brian Shaw to Dennis Scott from the baseline. And there's David Vaughn on the boards. Love to see that young man work. Wolf, short. That's knocked away by Reeves. Out of bounds to the Magic. Nick for Dennis now. Well, this is Dennis' first break of this ball game. He's played well, played a lot of minutes. So it's 7.43. Magic put it back into play here. We leave tomorrow night after our Thanksgiving repast and head to Minneapolis to play the Timberwolves. Yes. Offensive foul number two. On Friday night, Joe Wolf now the offensive foul and illegal screen. His first, that's counted as a turnover, only the second turnover of the game for the Magic. In case you didn't hear, Cedric Sabalos of the LA Lakers named the NBA Player of the Week for the past seven days. Vaughn now against Big Country, backs him in. Kept it alive, Vaughn the foul and the lay -in. So David took a swipe, got caught in his hand in the cookie jar, and Big Country to the line. Yes, he did. Um, got pushed back into the paint. And you'll see here, he made up his mind too late to go for the foul. And Big Country with the foul. And a chance for a three-point play. A big country starting to get it going. He scored 27 points now in his last five Vancouver games. 
That doesn't sound like an awful lot. But again, they're bringing him along slowly. Now he has three. His NBA high is 10. 7-18 to play in our first half. Chris King, number 17, back for Van Cooper. I like these uniforms, by the way. Yeah, I do too. I like them very much. Nice. Ryan Shaw. Morris Grant. One extra pass to Nick. 4-3, got none. Rebound Wolf to Nick. Now A.B. the catch. He'll fire up another round. Off the back iron. Vancouver on the run. Here's Martin. Whips it to A.B.N. He'll catch and fire it home over Nick. So double-O smooth was that on the play. And Vancouver's lead again is three. Grizzlies once led by eight in the game. Ryan Shaw got three, tried to reverse, missed it. King behind his back, behind his back again. Now to Martin on the run, now they'll slow it down. It's a fast unit on the floor here for Vancouver. They're pushing the ball down, trying to beat the Magic defense. A.B. hit by Big Country, no call, but he got the deuce. He got hit as he took the ball to the hole, but for A.B., that's... A good feeling for him to get a get a shot at the basket to go. And now Vancouver wants to take a timeout. 6-11 to play until halftime. Good ball game tonight. 35-34, the Grizzlies lead. It's a one-point Vancouver game. 35-34. And tonight the, the Magic Bench is coming to play. Goose. They've been getting some good minutes from different people. This time, Anthony Bowie is going to get out on the fast break. You'll see him get hit as he took the ball to the hole against Big Country. But A.B. gets the finger roll to, run, to go. He will be replaced in the lineup by Anthony Hardaway. Who, ironically, we mentioned is second to Michael Jordan. As you look at our NBA scoring leaders, brought to you by your local Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. Cedric Sabalos, the player of the week, third in scoring. Reggie Miller for Indiana, fourth. We didn't see Reggie. He was suspended when the Pacers were in town last week. Halfway through our second quarter, Byron Scott, surrounded by white shirts, still found a way to the hole. That's a little hard to believe right there. He's on the board with his first two. 37 34. Morris after setting the screen. Joe Wolf. Crowd starts to howl as Joe hits. Well, he's got really nice touch, doesn't he? And an array of shots. Shoots that little fall away in the paint as he did that time. Can stand up, face the basket. Shoot it from up to about 15 to 18 feet. And Joe, very happy to be here in Orlando. Home for him is Kohler, Wisconsin, where in the offseason he runs a Dairy Queen. Restaurant he said if I didn't get the call from the magic, I would have opened another Dairy Queen. So he's serving up something of another kind. Penny fouled and the finish. Beautiful play. Brian Shaw again. Those eyes ever active. And I think for everyone on the magic team, they love to sit, have, sit, have the ball in the hands of Brian Shaw. And that's particularly true for Penny Hardaway because that frees him up to do just what he did on that play. Fill the lane and get chances because Brian Shaw is so good at getting them to basketball. Magic look to go up two again. And they do as Penny has a dozen here in the first half. 39-37. Magic still struggling to find bottom 39% in the game, but they do lead. Scott. He'll shoot three and he'll hit it. Finally, Byron Scott finds the range. He has five. He's been Vancouver's best player off the bench all year. And another illegal defense, this time a tee. I think that might have been, uh, they called it on Reeves, but Anthony Avent was in the paint uh, from the weak side. Now watch after the pass goes in. And they got Reeves. He never left the paint. Penny uses the whole iron. He has 13. How about, did you watch that game last night, Seattle and Toronto? I did not have a chance oh. to watch it. We were in the finals of, actually in the playoffs of our church. I saw a hit, but finishes. Of our church volleyball league. Had the playoffs last night, the tournament, and happy to say that 
We are the Windermere Baptist Church Volleyball Champions. <laughs> Had a lot of fun, a bunch of fun last night. Ten to shoot. And Scott catches, was bumped, couldn't hit. Well, the reason I ask is you missed Damon Stoudemire. Last night, a triple-double for Toronto. I tell you, the situation struck me last night. It was somewhat ironic. Remembering when the Magic announced the Penny Hardaway trade, how the fans here booed that decision. The fans in Toronto when Damon Stoudemire yeah. was picked booed that as well. They wanted Isaiah Thomas and company to take Ed O'Bannon. Well, in Orlando and Toronto, they are booing no more about their point guard. I mean, it was just a great performance as Toronto knocked off the Seattle Supersonics at home. Well, that was a good move by Isaiah Thomas. You know, if you can't get a real good big man in the draft, to take a point guard is, is, is a key move because he is the guy that you're going to have to build around, the guy that's going to have to run the show. Uh, it's a young team, so he's going to have an opportunity to learn and to get better. And Isaiah Thomas saw a lot of himself as a young player in Damon Stoudemire, and that's why he made that move. So, uh, And it's worked out well. And especially so when you consider next year, there are some big-name centers that are eligible for free agents. Shaquille O'Neal is one. Alonzo Mourning is another. Dikembe Mutombo is a third, just to name a couple. Joe Wolf, wide open. Won't go this time. Grant kept it alive, and the Magic reclaimed. So I wouldn't be surprised if Toronto gets into that free agent bidding and goes after a big man. Grant rolls to Joe Wolf. Great ball movement. Very good ball movement. Good reaction by Horace Grant and by Joe Wolf following up the play. Wolf having an off night. He's only shooting 50% in this game. He's three, he's three out of six. Tongue planted firmly in cheek. Big country. Derek Martin keeps that dribble alive. Feeds Brian Reeves with three to shoot. Doesn't get the lay in. Ball knocked around, the Magic come up. Now a run out for Penny Hardaway. Vancouver gets back quickly. Penny, though, splits and hits. Well, that's so easy. When he's as aggressive as he has been this entire season, looking for his shots, that's, that's hard to deal with. You know, he, he's almost Jordan-esque in the sense that whenever he wants to take that shot or make a bucket, he's going to make it. You can't stop him once he has his mind made up. Derek Martin, Byron Scott fakes with Nick rushing at him, takes the leaning jumper and hits it. And now he has eight. And I, I think that's a fair comparison. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're exactly right. There he goes again. This time he draws the contact. Byron Scott is guilty. The Magic take timeout, leading 46 to 43. His second, second team foul. Back in Orlando, 46-43, Joe Wolf off of the Orlando bench has six of Orlando's 14 bench points. Well, you'll see him right here. Good pass from Horace Grant. And Joe Wolf makes that one. Penny Hardaway, very difficult to stop on the fast break because of his size. The defense, you see the defense retreating. You let him get that close to the basket. He's going to get most times this year that shot to fall. Don't forget to join us for our Discount Auto Parts Halftime Report. Go with the pros you know, Discount Auto Parts. Paul Kennedy will have a guest, we'll have stats, we'll have highlights, and more. Oh, Penny Hardaway just snared out of the air by Greg Anthony. Now he steps through, lays it off the window, and in. So Greg Anthony with four. And now a technical foul on Greg Anthony. I think he argued the no call as he took the ball to the basket against Penny Hardaway. He might have thought he was bumped as he took the ball to the hole. And Dennis knocks down the tee and has seven. Here's a look. Well, there's the turnover. Greg Anthony takes that ball away. And then there's a little bump right here. And let's see what he does after the play. Well, guys in the truck stopped it a little too soon. 2.18 left, 47-45. Nick Anderson against Blue Edwards. Dennis pulls up. Oh, ripped off the three. But the Magic get the rebound back. Now Penny the catch. Whips it into Horace. Blocked away 
by Brian Reeves, and now the foul called, and he's close to being rung up. I think the rookie made a pretty good play this time. I thought time. so, too. I, I thought he got a, a pretty decent block on this. Does he bring his arm down and get Horace Grant? I don't know. Might have gotten a piece of the arm, but pretty decent attempt by Big Country. But if you remember back, one of the other things I, I remember about the uh, first couple of years for this uh, Orlando Magic team, you don't get many calls. Right. I mean, you just don't get many. Horace Grant missed them both, so they're not hurt by that foul. But the expansion teams, you know, they got to really work to get the officials to call anything their way. <laughs> you take your lumps in the first couple of years. Tend to shoot now for Chris King, who's back for Vancouver. Anthony, oh, wide open, didn't take the shot. Now traveled, no call, then one pass too many. Ball on the floor, Nick kicks it out of bounds. So Vancouver's going to get the ball. The official didn't see it. Yeah, that's the proper call. While Vancouver inbounds, we want to wish a speedy recovery to Tom Galloway, a tape operator with Sunshine New York, had knee surgery. And now Vancouver takes the 20. Yeah, Brian, we're winners didn't argue. I thought he might try to get the officials to reset the shot clock. I don't know if Nick Anderson ever had possession of it. And that's what they're talking to him about. That uh, Vancouver bench, they want the reset of the shot clock. They're not going to get it. We'll see here if Nick gets control of it. Now, there it is. No, never had it. So good, no call. Here's what's up at halftime. Jack Swope will be along. He's the executive vice president of the Magic. Our Gatorade scoreboard stats and highlights. One to shoot. Jack also busy with the hockey team. And that'll be a 24 second violation. Blue Edwards fires up the desperation shot. 47 45. The Solar Bears playing very well. Paul doing a great job, by the way, with the Solar Bear hockey telecasts. I hope you're enjoying them as well. One and a half minutes left until the break. King against Dennis Scott. Dennis crossover dribble, now six to shoot. Bounce pass inside. Nick, desperation shot off the side of the goal, won't go. Here come the Grizzlies. They very nearly turn it over again. Now Anthony steps in, leans in, ties the game. They're a scrappy group. They are a scrappy team. They may have lost eight in a row, but you wouldn't tell by the effort. Brian Hill very frustrated with the way Magic ran that last offensive set. Inside, Horace unties the game. Another good look from John Conkak, the power forward and center spot tonight, working very well together. That combination worked when Joe Wolf was on the floor, and it works right here. Brian Reeves against the Cat Man. Gaddison, fall away, jumper won't go. Nick the rebound. Magic push it up all but five seconds here. Dennis Scott, long three. One step too many. Now the final shot for Vancouver. They could take a lead into the halftime locker room if they hit a three here. It's a lot of time on the shot clock when that shot went up, but Dennis Scott had that feeling. Anthony, oh, pulled the string. Had the yips, didn't get it up high enough. Penny shot, that's good if it goes, and it's wide. And to the right. Well, Jack, something to consider. Vancouver averages 89 points a game. They've scored 47 here at halftime. It's the Magic 49, Vancouver 47 at the half. We'll be back with more after this. Tonight in the O-Arena, a great crowd on hand on Thanksgiving Eve. And look at this, Expansion Vancouver hanging with the Magic Men despite 15 points from Penny Hardaway. At times, yeah, it has resembled a wrestling match. The Executive Vice President of the Orlando Magic, Jack Swope, with us now. Remember these expansion days, Jack, uh, when the Magic were a, a first-year club just trying to hang with the big boys for four quarters and maybe steal one? Absolutely. We did it just a few years ago. and. 
fortunately we're beyond that, but it's a little scary. We've got to get out in front of these guys, and hopefully in the fourth quarter they're not hanging around. Thanksgiving arrives uh, tomorrow, and that's the holiday season, the buying season, and annually we sit down and talk about great Christmas gifts. There is a misconception that each and every Magic game is sold out. We'll show uh, folks watching tonight the uh, Magic schedule, their games and tickets available. Plenty of games. We have uh, Detroit coming up right after the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. The next Thursday we have Dallas, Minnesota on the 20th of December. So there's plenty more games coming up. Even New York and Houston, there's a few seats left. And uh, in terms of your hockey team, that's turning out to be a, both an on-ice success and a marketing success for you, too, and you have a handful of games now in the month of December approaching. We do. Just this weekend, we have games coming up against Milwaukee and Houston. Then in December, there's plenty of games. You'll see that we've got Las Vegas, Fort Wayne uh, coming up in the middle of December. And then right after the holidays, we have Houston and Detroit. I noted uh, you'll hear a lot of folks say, oh, air travel during the holidays is difficult. Well, if you're at the Orlando International Airport and you have a few minutes to spare, well, imagine you have a brand new store going in there, don't you? Yeah, come December 15, thereabouts, we'll have a store open, which will help our international traffic and give us a, another area where we can start selling more Magic merchandise. We also have another uh, another facility there at Fashion Square Mall during the holiday season, so it should be a lot of fun. and. Hopefully we'll sell a lot of merchandise. Jack, it's come so far in seven years, hasn't it? Wow, this burgeoning company. It really has. I mean, we've gone from one store to four locations. We've gone from a team that won 18 games the first season to the NBA Finals. It just keeps growing, and it's you got to pinch yourself every once in a while to realize the success that we've had, Paul. 49-47 at the break. More in a moment. On Sunshine, tonight's halftime report is brought to you by Discount Auto Parts. Go with the pros you know, Discount Auto Parts. At the break, this is surprising. The Magic butt by two, 49 to 47, as the Grizzlies have been a growling here. This Thanksgiving holiday, please don't stuff yourself with too much turkey uh, here tonight. Stuff Rainey and all the Magic folks wish you and yours a very happy holiday season. To our Gatorade scoreboard tonight, and we begin this evening uh, with a look at Miami, which has won two in a row. Trailing Golden State, though, as Ronnie Cycli returns down to South Florida. Houston at 8-1, building its lead over Philadelphia. Boston looking to hand Charlotte its fifth straight setback. New York traveling to Cleveland. The Cavs with the upper hand. Detroit hosting the Bullets, who the Magic will play Saturday in the D.C. area. Chicago and San Antonio just underway. Expansion Toronto hunts its fifth win already in Milwaukee. Sacramento and Utah, Phoenix and Atlanta. The Nets and the Clippers a little bit later tonight. That's the scene here in the arena. Chip and the Goose just ahead after this word from Discount Auto Parts. Do you believe in the magic? All oh, pace line crossover. Reverse the oh, beauty. Oh, he crossed him up and knocked him down. Pistons at the magic. Monday night on Sunshine. Don't miss the end of an era as the Southwest Conference combines 80 years of tradition, excellence, and pride into one final season of glory. Saturday at 1, live on Sunshine. Tonight's halftime report is brought to you by Discount Auto Parts. Go with the pros you know, Discount Auto Parts. 49-47, the Magic have the lead over the Grizzlies here at halftime. And welcome back courtside, everybody. Chip and the Goose with you, and a very happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Not a turkey of a ball game, Jack. Very competitive so far, and that's the kind of basketball Brian Winters likes to see out of his young team. Well, it has been. His team has played hard. They have scrambled. They have scraped. They've done everything they possibly could to stay in this ball game. And uh, really, that's a tradition of most expansion teams. Play hard. Uh, but still, I say it's up to the Magic as to how well they do in this ball game. It's not Vancouver. The Magic have to step it up, take this team serious, and put some distance between themselves and Vancouver. And as we mentioned, Vancouver almost beat the Knicks in hallowed Madison Square Garden, so you know the wake-up call has been delivered. Here's a look now at your Discount Auto Parts halftime highlights. Well, um, this is the way the game got started. You'll see Vancouver here, and they push the ball up the floor. Rich King. Well, show his athleticism, get to the baseline, throw that one down on the reverse. And that's established the tempo, got him some confidence early. 
Uh, Brian Shaw came in, did an excellent job of running the team. You'll see him right here with the bounce pass to Penny Hardaway. Throws that one down, does Penny. Uh, it seems like Penny has been everywhere. 15 first half points. Brian Shaw is going to get this one again. Not exactly the same play, but the same results as he gets the ball to Penny. He takes the ball to the hole, gets a foul, and gets a three-point play. And then Horace Grant Pat makes the uh, nice wraparound pass to Joe Wolf, and Joe Wolf throws that one. So the Magic moving the ball well. It's been very nice to see them do that. Now let's see what took place numbers-wise. We'll look at our first half stats brought to you by Disney MGM Studios. The Magic still struggling from the floor, just 40% from the field. Neither team shot three-point field goals very well. Vancouver within one in the rebounding edge and only seven turnovers forced by the Magic against Vancouver. Orlando just for themselves. Penny Hardaway leads all scores with 15 points, but a balanced Vancouver attack has Chris King with nine, Byron Scott eight, and Greg Anthony and Blue Edwards with six apiece. You know Brian Winters has to be happy with the way his team is still in this game on the road, 49-47, but this is the way the Vancouver Ball Club has played, especially lately during this eight-game losing streak. Three of their last four losses have been by five or fewer points, and that's some of the agony and the ecstasy of being a first-year team, and that's something that Vancouver and Toronto will both go through here in the 95-96 campaign. The Magic open up with Hardaway, missing a jump shot. Benoit Benjamin, the rebound, and Vancouver heads back, trailing by two. Yeah, it's very frustrating, Chip. You, man, you get so close, and it seems you always get shot down after giving a great effort. And it seems like the better team usually steps up and turns it on the last few minutes, and they put the game away, as the Knicks did the last time out for this Vancouver team. You hate to use the word toying with, but that's that's after a while, that's what you start to feel like. Literally, right. you're just playing with you, and then all of a sudden, let's end it five minutes into the fourth quarter, and everybody goes home. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it, because I think uh, that's the way you begin to feel. It's still early for this Vancouver team, so... They might not know that feeling as of yet, but as the season goes on and they continue to play in these close ball games, they'll get down and uh, winning at the end of the season will come very, very tough. 11.25 left here in the third quarter. It's just underway. The Magic in front by one, 49 to 48. And he is. Tried to hit Horace Grant, the pass too far beyond his reach. And that's a good look by Penny. Now he's going to get credited with that turnover. But that should have been one that could have been handled. Lou Edwards hits all bottom, and Vancouver takes the lead. Just in case you wondered, we're in Vancouver, March 15th. And Edwards now with eight puts the Grizzlies in front. And the Magic misfire again. Not the kind of way you want to start a third period in a close game. Well, in any game, but particularly against this team, because the one thing they want to accomplish, and I said this early, Vancouver, they want to be close in the last two minutes. Because then anything can happen. No question about it. We saw that so many times in 89 and 90. Edwards, high arcing rainbow shot wouldn't fall. Mick Anderson against Blue Edwards. Horace Grant up top against Kenny Gaddison. Benny tries to get away from Greg Anthony. Now Dennis into the post over the top to Penny. Challenges Benoit Benjamin. Missed it. Horace Grant the rebound. Stripped away by Gaddison. And Kenny Gaddison is called for his third. 44, Kenny Gaddison. Benoit Benjamin got enough his on that shot team. that Penny took to force him to miss it. Horace Watch right there. Gets it, knocks it over the rim. Horace Grant there to clean it up. And there is the foul. Horace Grant with two rebounds to add to his first half total to five of five here in this third period. 10.09 left. So let me get out the fingers and toes here. It's, that would be five and two of seven rebounds for Horace Grant. Yes. Pretty good. Just checking. And now nine points. Ten minutes to play here in the third quarter. Turkey's in the oven. Pumpkin pies are baking. 
It sounds like you're looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. No question. Gaddison fouled, couldn't finish. He comes down hobbling. May have stepped on someone's foot. Nick Anderson commits the foul. Jackie Newsstand for your issue of Florida Sports Fan Magazine this month with features on Bobby Bowden, the Dolphins' Tim Bowens, and the University of Miami's Kennard Lang and Kenny Holmes. Look for the cover shot of Coach Hayden Fox. We'll call 1-800-889-1993. to Ida and Jill Rossi celebrating their 68th wedding anniversary. They're the parents of Jill Carroll Flora who works here with the Magic. She is the secretary for the coaching staff. And yes, Scott oh, blocked block. away. Right here up. comes Chris King. Our drive and a right hand hammer. Yes, King. King with 11. Vancouver up three and a 22nd. Magic timeout. Orlando has met the enemy, and it is us right now with 9.37 to play in the third quarter. The Magic want to talk it over ever so briefly, Goose. Yeah, they haven't been sharp. They haven't been sharp here in this third period. And there's the play right there. Chris King with the block. A lively, lively athletic player. Makes Dennis Scott eat that one, takes it down and throws that throws it down on the other end. Let's stuff another promo in for you. The Hoover rebounding leaders. Vin Baker leads David Robinson and Sean Kemp. In the rebounding columns. Boy, Vin Baker is some kind of player. If he played in a bigger market, you'd be hearing him and seeing him in the Nike and the Reebok and the Converse commercials too. But Milwaukee is a very, very small town but they're a young up and coming team too. 54 51 is our score nine and a half left and now an illegal screen set by the magic after the timeout. Boy oh boy not the execution that you need to have coming out of a timeout. You burn the 20 second timeout to drop a play and try to get your team focused and you come out and commit a turnover. But then the Magic themselves come away and force the steal. John Contact with the good play to atone for his error at the other end. 54-51. Down it goes into Horace Grant. He tries to post. That's not his strong suit. Now Penny the drive. Got the screen and jumps over John Contact. Uses John Contact as a ladder. First time we've seen that. Climbed his back to throw that one down. Man. Good thing John's not made a kryptonite. Otherwise, Superman wouldn't have been able to take off. 54-53 is your score. Gaddison now. And he reaches in, forces the jump ball. Eight forty-one left here in the third quarter. We'll jump it up. And Penny Hardaway. Just about jumped over John Conkak that time. He couldn't get out of the way. So Penny just climbed his back. Down low to Big Benoit Benjamin. Nice pass to Gaddison. Stripped away Dennis Scott. And the foul on the play. Foul number three, Dennis Scott. Another look at Penny Hardaway. Nick Anderson finds them on the other side. And the Grizzly defense doesn't adjust. John Conkite couldn't get out of the way, and you saw Penny just climb right over top. John was ready to call an offensive foul on his teammate on that play. Two misses. Addison, a 70% shooter at the stripe, is four, two out of four tonight. Chris King's done a good job on Dennis Scott tonight. Dennis with but seven points. Hardaway changes hands, misses the shot. Contact gets the loose ball. Benny against Anthony. Hard drive, three to shoot. Hanks can't hit ball loose. Vancouver comes up. Hardaway wanted the whistle, didn't get it. Now a four on three Vancouver break. Anthony for three, hits all bottom. And Anthony with nine gives Vancouver a four point lead. 
Well, the Grizzlies score only 89 points game. They're closing in on 60, and we're not even halfway through the third quarter. Kick backs in, feeds Horace Grant, who cuts him. Benoit Benjamin hammers him. And that is Big Benoit's second foul of the game. Good aggressive foul by Benoit Benjamin. And every one of these plays send a message to the Magic. It's not going to be easy, guys. So Horace Grant now, a couple of free throws. Yeah, Vancouver struggling for wins. But they're also struggling for respect, too. And their hard play, I think, is certainly making its way around the league. Kind of like the Clippers last year. Remember how badly they were beaten night in and night out, but they never let up. It was 48 minutes of war for Bill Fitcher's team, and I think that's really helped catapult them this season off to their good start. Out in Southern California. Vancouver with the ball up three now. Their biggest lead was eight. That was in the first quarter. Chris King, his college coach with Bob Stack, now the assistant in Washington. Gaddison falling down nearly, come away. Now Dennis Scott leads Penny on a break. He turns Anthony around. Hard drive, right hand, oh baby! <laughs> and that a message to Vancouver from Penny Hardaway. Take that. He's special, isn't he? 57, 56. Benjamin. And a pushing foul on John Kotkak. Well, that's about as inspired as Benjamin's played yeah. in this game. You're exactly right. But now Kotkak with four fouls. And first off, we'll have a timeout here. Six minutes and 50 seconds to play. Penny Hardaway leads all scores with 19 in a close game. NBA Orlando Magic Basketball is brought to you by your Central Florida GMC truck dealers. By Gooding, Central Florida's hometown supermarkets, where you always find only our best. By Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. By Dodge, see your friendly Dodge dealer today. And by Scotty's, the home improvement team dedicated to your satisfaction. The Orlando Arena watching the Magic and the Grizzlies battle here halfway through our third quarter. Donald Royal makes his first appearance of the night for the Magic team. Benjamin on a give and go, gives it to Gaddison, and the Grizzlies go right at the big size advantage, and they score easily two more points. Well, that's good pass, Benoit Benjamin. Donald Royal was coming with the double team. Gaddison made the cut to the basket. 59-56, Vancouver. Dennis Scott for three, that's off the right. Long rebound tap, Penny Hardaway the save, but his toe was on the line. We're in Minneapolis Friday night, but we have problems of plenty here this evening. The visiting Grizzlies have the ball and the lead. Madison the catch, reverse layup shot, knocked away. Here's Nick. Nick tonight, two of five from the field, but six rebounds. He's had seven or more boards and four straight Magic ball games. And defensively, he's been everywhere. And then a Scott in traffic. Benjamin swats that away from behind. 5.45 left. Oh, Dennis has gotten his last two shots blocked here. Benjamin open and hits. And Vancouver has a five-point lead. Joe Wolf up off the Magic bench. Uh, he might come in for Dennis Scott. I'm not sure. Illegal defense, Illegal Benoit defense Benjamin. Against the Grizzlies. That is a technical foul. So Dennis Scott will step to the line and shoot the free throw. Magic. Down 61-56. Down 57. Dennis having an unusually uh, tough night from the field here tonight. Two for 13 in this ball game. He's had a couple of shots blocked. So Dennis sprints over to the sideline there, and he is upset with himself that he hasn't been able to get it going. Penny over the top. Now at 21. Yeah, Dennis 
The only other bad game he had was the first road game of the year up in Atlanta. He's been very, very efficient, very consistent. Well, the good thing about Dennis is he can uh, turn it on and get some points very quickly. Anthony got it back after a momentary lapse. Now Gaddison poked away by Nick. Now Donald Royal, the loose ball. 61-59, Vancouver the lead. Penny, long three, long go. Chris King boards. Morris Grant nearly stole it. Need to take advantage of those turnovers. When you get them, Vancouver normally turns the ball over a lot. They have just nine turnovers here in this ball game. And they have been protecting the basketball a whole lot better the last five games. So the fact that they average about. Benjamin score the bucket and the foul. The fact Joe Wolf the foul. They average 17 turnovers a game, a little misleading because the last five ball games they've averaged, they've uh, cut down a lot on those. There's the foul. So Benoit Benjamin can give his team a five point lead. Jack, are you concerned? <laughs> Magic shooting just 37 percent. Um, well, I'm not so much concerned about the shooting. It's the other aspects of the game that I'm more concerned with, particularly what's happening on defense. Um, you know, they haven't shot the ball well as a team all year long, but they've still been able to win because they've stopped other teams from scoring. Nick Hart drive. He's fouled and finishes. So, see, the offense will come. So, uh, that's not as much a concern as the somewhat lack of aggressiveness that we've seen on defense so far in this game and then protecting the basketball. Nick Anderson gets the drive and goes to the basket. And uh, really, you know, the. Uh, uh, that shows on offense simply because you're not doing it in other areas of the game. So if that ever picks up the defense, uh, the hustle, the aggressiveness that you need, if that picks up, the offense is going to come. 4 minutes left. Vancouver in front by 2 and they have the ball. The Grizzlies have scored 100 points only once. And that was an overtime game against Minnesota. So there's some defense. Imagine get the ball going the other way. Hardaway stutter steps, leans in, hangs, can't hit. Benoit Benjamin got him again. And that'll be his third foul. With 3.49 to play in the period. Penny Hardaway just keeping that dribble alive. Nothing opens up. So he takes it on to the basket. Benoit Benjamin picks up the foul. So he's starting to hack a lot. Down on the inside as the Magic start to challenge him more and more. The Grizzlies have a young athletic forward by the name of Antonio Harvey, 6'10. He was claimed in the expansion draft from the LA Lakers. He's a guy that has come on and has been very active for the Vancouver team. So if Benjamin gets in foul trouble, I would assume that's who they would go to. 22 now for Penny. He's one out of two at the line on that trip. And the Magic are within one, but the Grizzlies get the ball back. Vancouver shooting an even 50% in the game. And that speaks to the defense probably more than anything. As you see, a foul on the play. Foul number five, beaten by Blue Edwards. His first penalty situation And Vancouver to the line. Blue Edwards shooting two. Both teams will shoot the penalty from here on out as Vancouver has four fouls. The Magic on that foul over the limit. Blue Edwards would have gotten two free throws anyway, fouled in the act of shooting. Brian Winters and staff has to be happy with uh, the effort his team has given here in this ball game. A little frustrating after after winning their first two ball games that they have lost eight in a row and given the kind of effort night in and night out that you've seen here. But still a lot of basketball left here tonight. 318 left. Nick goes to work. Bad hit. Addison the rebound. Mentioned Vancouver shooting 50% as a team. 43% on the year. Only four other teams have a lower team shooting percentage. Dallas, New Jersey, Milwaukee, and Minnesota. But tonight, they've been very efficient. 
Benjamin had it blocked, but Edwards hustled, got it back. Benjamin tried to hit Greg Anthony. And they say that Vancouver knocks it out of bounds. I thought the Magic did. And got a terrible, terrible break, did the Vancouver Grizzlies. Timeout on the floor. 2.51 left. We will be right back. This presentation of Magic Basketball on Sunshine Network is brought to you in part by the busy folks this time of year at Goodings. Always our best. I am Chip Carey along with the Goose, Jack Givens, Paul Kennedy alongside as well. As Vancouver leads it 65-63 here in our third quarter. The Grizzlies out shooting Orlando 49 to 38 percent. On the night, a rare bad shooting game for Dennis Scott. He's two out of 13. Penny Hardaway, however, has carried the load offensively with 23, and the Magic Bench has chipped in with 14 points as well. Anderson turns the corner, kept up the momentum. Nice. Well, no one stepped up to cut Nick off as he came around the screen, so the Magic finally tie this game back up. 65 apiece, and Anthony Event gets the call for Vancouver. Greg Anthony pops out. Now Blue Edwards will fakes three. Hard drive for two. Anthony will load up and take it. Can't make it this time. Penny the rebound. Two minutes left in the quarter. And they'll try to take this pick and roll again. Joe Wolf that time gets, gets it to see if they go back to it again. And now an offensive foul was called. What in the world was that? Offensive foul. I guess Joe Wolf tried to hook his man. Well, he just ran away from the play. He was leaving. I mean, he turned. Now there's the hand locked around, but he goes the other way. So I guess he locked his arm around, and that's where they got the call. 65-65. Benjamin as Horace takes a swipe, makes a good defensive play, but Vancouver gets the ball as Anthony Avett wants his former team. Tough break right there for the Magic. Byron Scott. Oh, that was the spot he broke our hearts two years ago. And Byron Scott makes him pay for it. Luckily, his toe was on the line. Byron Scott with 10. A chance for a three-point play won't fall. Greg Anthony got Penny, and that's two on Greg. The Vancouver bench wanted a three-point shot. It was a three. And they do get three. I thought he, it looked like he was far enough back. Yeah, he's way behind that line. So they are up three. The Magic can put it within one. Penny can knock him down. 23 for Hardaway, 28 is his average. Sixty-eight, sixty-seven is your score. Vancouver heads to Charlotte next. Then Miami. Then Minnesota. They've already beaten the Timberwolves once. They'll try to do it again later this week. Benjamin traveled, no call. Wolf goes flying. And a loose ball foul. It'll go against Anthony Avent, I think, with the push on Jill Wolf. That is the call. And that puts the Magic at the free throw line as both teams, as Jack mentioned, are over the limit. See if we can get a look at it here as Benoit Benjamin makes the play. Now there's Anthony Avent, throws Wolf to the floor. And Wolf will get a couple free throws out of it. Well, this guy's been quite a find, hasn't he, Jack? Joe Wolf, six points tonight. Rebound, three assists. Good, fundamentally sound basketball player. And actually, Penny's going to get the free throws. But Joe Wolf has been, I think, a little more than everybody had hoped for when the Magic got it. I think a lot more than everyone thought. Um, they wanted a guy that could come in and uh, maybe run some screens, uh, get some putbacks. Not necessarily give him the offense uh, that he has given him. A guy that uh, you can run plays for. You've seen the Magic go to the pick and roll. Kind of uh, what you get from Jeff Turner. Byron Scott trying to get the call. Could not. Blue Edwards couldn't come up. Loose ball. Magic up one. Brian Shaw runs the point. 
Bryant with four assists already in the game. Off the bench. Nick baseline move. Shot her short. Loose ball foul. Will it stay here? Yeah, Benoit Benjamin pushed off Horace, and that's four on Big Benoit. Correct. Correction, that's his third foul. There's Nick Anderson and Benoit Benjamin with the push on Horace Grant. Horace Grant at the line. Shooting two. The Magic still can get another possession out of this if they can force the shot, get the rebound. Real good to have Grant in the lineup. He has his sixth double-double of the year. Six out of the ten games that he has played in, he has had double-doubles. 11 points, now 12 and 10 rebounds in this ball game. Four assists for Horace Grant and at least one block for Grant. Actually give him two in the first half. Vancouver with the ball trailing by three. They have all but five seconds now as Anthony puts it in play. Blue Edwards for two, got none. Rebound tapped, Aven comes up. Vancouver now can take the final shot. And Byron Scott will go to work against Brian Shaw. Well, now he won't. Two to shoot. Blue Edwards loads up. Good at the horn. Two-point shot. And Vancouver is within one. So we go to the fourth period. And now anything could happen. It's the Magic 71, Vancouver 70. I didn't hear what he said. Buzzer beater. Seventy-one seventy, our score as we start this fourth and final period of this ball game. Blue Edwards with the buzzer beater to bring his team to within one point, and this came off of an offensive rebound by former Magic player Anthony Avent. And you see Blue Edwards throw it down, and the Magic have the work cut out for them the rest of the way. I know this Vancouver team wanted it close going into the fourth period, and they are down by one. And here's how it's happened. Our game summary is brought to you by the Discover Card. Goose who pays to discover the card who pays you back. Well, Penny Hardaway having another Penny Hardaway type game. The Magic shooting the ball very poorly. And the crowd now coming to life trying to get the Magic involved. Amen against Wolf. Ten to shoot. Double O smooth. Uh, loads up the right hand and hits. Vancouver back in front. Eleven and a half to play. Hardaway turns the corner, kept the dribble alive. Hard drive, left hand shot. Yes. You can't even. You can't imagine how hard of a play that was for Hardaway. 73-72 in midair, changes hands and lays it in, and now Vancouver with an offensive foul. Avent with the illegal screen. Yeah, you know, Penny has a knack for making this play look easy, Chip. He knows he's going to get hit as he takes the ball to the basket. Benoit Benjamin comes over, tries to avoid the contact, and in doing that, he does throw his body into Penny some, gets away with it as he almost forces a miss. But Penny Hardaway knocks it down. One minute into the fourth quarter, Magic by one. Penny against Anthony now. Draws the double team. Joe Wolf cuts to the basket and lays it in. Eight for Wolf. Now, this is the kind of place where an expansion team might fall apart. If you up the pressure defensively, force a little bit faster tempo, you can put together a run. Byron Scott, though, has uh, other ideas. You have to do it with your defense. That Which, little crossover is, you know, it's a good move, but it's a little bit easy. And defense has been the problem. Vancouver at 48% in the game. Has scored now 74 points. They've got an outside shot at 100 here tonight. Ten to shoot now for Brian Shaw against Byron Scott in traffic. Knocked away to Blue Edwards. The Magic turn it over. Here comes Blue. Nice touch pass to Byron Scott. Nearly traveled. Lays it up. And drew the foul, Dennis Scott. Just enough of a misplay to force the Magic to reach. Well, you see the concern in Brian's face. 
Um, Brian Shaw tried to take the ball to the basket. And there goes the push. And the foul by Dennis Scott. So Byron Scott now. Our thanks to Byron for chatting with Paul before the game. And he's one of the better free throw shooters in the league. Although he has missed one here tonight. Well, he's there, Reggie Theus, if you want to compare the Magic and Vancouver. Reggie, a big time scorer in his stops. Came to Orlando and put a lot of points on the board in that one year he was here. Byron Scott expected to do the same thing. They don't start him. They like his punch off the bench. They feel very comfortable with Blue Edwards there. But again, I get back to what I said earlier in the game. Injuries really hurt Vancouver before the game even started for them. Losing Gerald Wilkins, I think, his 17, 18 points a game. A team that scores 85, 86 tonight. That's a big, big difference. That's a lot. Grizzlies back in front by one. Avent and Wolf tangle. John Kanka! Uh, that's another thing Jill Wolf can do for you. He's a good passer from that high post. Four assists in this game for Jill Wolf. 77 76. That's one behind Penny in the game. Wolf, Shaw, and Grant each with four dishes for Orlando. Tough matchup here for Dennis Scott. Byron outside, just off the iron. He followed Byron Scott very nicely behind the screen. And Shaw, Penny Hardaway, 4-3. Long rebound to Greg Anthony. Up ahead comes Chris King. He leaps out, lays it in. 14 for King, that's a new season high. 15 is his NBA high. Under nine minutes now. B. Shaw, quick shooting. Won't fall. Out of bounds to... It'll go to Vancouver. The outside official gives the ball to the Grizzlies. One official says Magic Ball. The other says Vancouver. The Magic Bench wants the jump, but it won't work out that way. Well, it should have been a jump ball. The officials disagreed, and it might have hit one of the Vancouver players. But the Magic don't get it. And Penny gets a rest now, 29 points. Uh, somebody's gonna, somebody else is going to have to step up and yeah. give the Magic some offense here. Chris King loads up from the outside. Avent rebounds on the offensive glass. And a foul on Nick Anderson. And you hear the talk on the floor. And that's what will happen when you get the confidence that Vancouver has right now. You're going to start talking a lot of trash uh, with each other. Not so much toward the Magic, but you're going to start rallying around each other. And that's what you have here. Anthony cradles the rock. Hard drive. Hangs left-hand shooter. Won't fall. Ryan Shaw the rebound. Vancouver by one. Wolf from the elbow. Won't go. Avent from 15. Yes! Avent with eight. And the Magic take time out. Avent, eight points, six boards. Double O smooth, four out of five from the field. And the Grizzlies lead is three. And we're back right after this. It's 80 77, 801 to play here in our fourth quarter. The Vancouver Grizzlies playing one of their better games of the year tonight in hostile territory are playing very, very well. Well, tickets this weekend are available for the Solar Bears and Minnesota matchup. You can call Ticketmaster at the number you see or pick up your tickets at the arena box office. Morris Grant is back for the Magic. 80-77, your score. Lawrence Moulton. Rookie out of Syracuse checks into the ball game. Nick backs Byron Scott in, draws a triple team. Horace Grant pump fakes and lays it in. Good look, Nick Anderson. Good job, Horace Grant, following the play. Well, you have to pick it up at some point, Chip, defensively and start doing the things that you normally do on the defensive end of the floor. Oh, I know you like the way Mr. Moten wears those socks. That's how you used to wear them, man. Way up toward the knees. 
It's easy to pick him out. Oh, jumper, Chris King, and he hits. I mean, he probably hasn't made a shot like that all season long, Chris yep. King. I mean, You're that's right. not his game, but in a game where you have a confidence, you can do that. He's six of seven from the field, seven rebounds, 15 points. And a new NBA high. There's the foul. There's the finish. Brian Shaw pounded by Mr. Moat. And that's his first. Brian goes to the line. He now has six. There's Horace Grant. And here's a look at your Grant stats. Brought to you by your local Chevy Geo dealer. Another double double for Horace Grant. Six on the year. Eighty-two, eighty-two. We're under seven minutes. Shaw the steal. Ball loose. Bolton comes away with it again, however. And now Vancouver has Byron Scott for three. Yes. Yeah, he's feeling it. That's the way he gets. He gets on his on his little screen there. And Dennis Scott over Big Country won't go. Rebound, Chris King. Vancouver is up three as we approach the halfway point of our fourth quarter. Well, I wonder what the tabloids in New York said after the Knicks barely escaped playing this Vancouver team. Ten to shoot now from Oden. Byron Scott. Not a big country screen. Hard drive out to King. Five to shoot. He'll load up again. Long rebound. Vancouver has that surrounded. Byron Scott will call time as he was trapped in the corner. Wise move by Byron Scott. Will they take the full or the 20 here? Apparently it will be the full timeout. 6.04 left. Vancouver the ball when we come back. 85-82-604 to play in our ball game during the timeout. We found our fanatical fan brought to you by Scotty's. The Scotty's fanatical fan is the lucky winner of an Encon ceiling fan. And uh, here's a look at that three-point shot by Byron Scott. Watch, he makes sure he gets behind the three-point line, and why not throw him up from out there? You well, know, you can't help but be impressed with the way Vancouver has played. I mean, they are a big-time underdog. They are certainly earning some admiration for the fans here in Orlando. Both with a quick move. Horace Grant absolutely cleaned his clock. Oh, did he ever. And got no whistle. Now Dennis Scott struggling with his shot. Pulls up. Still can't buy a bucket. That's on top of the goal. Ball loose. Who wants it? Nick Anderson comes away. Over big country, no. Ball loose, Nick got it back. Left hand this time, and he draws the foul. And that's uh, the best effort the Magic have made all night long. Well, that's the most the cheer team, uh, the, the crowd has had to cheer about. Nick Anderson just goes to get it. Wanted the foul right here. But watch him. I mean, this is the kind of work you have to give on a night like tonight. You have to do that. So he'll toe the stripe now. He has nine in the game. Nine rebounds, but this only his second free throw of the night. Five straight games for Nick with seven or more rebounds. On the year, he's averaging eight boards a game. Boy, the Magic's guards have been outstanding in the board category. Brian Shaw a little over four. Penny at six. Nick with eight. One-point game. The challenge right here. Find a way to stop Byron Scott. And that's where the offense is going. It's going to go through him right now. And he's got the ball now with 10 to shoot. Big country sets the screen. Scott rolls, fires over Horace, won't go. Tap try. Ball loose to Moten. He got the lead. He was in the right place at the right time. And Vancouver's up three. Five minutes left here tonight at the arena. Magic will reload with contact and Penny Hardaway in a moment. Morris Grant now draws double. Wolf rolls and is fouled. Moten got a piece of Joe Wolf. And someone else was there as well. Lawrence Moten got the ball, got a lot of arms. So Joe Wolf with another strong cut to the basket. And uh, Dennis Scott will take a seat. On a night where the legs are not there for Dennis, he will have to sit down. Two for 15 tonight for Dennis, as we said. Uncharacteristic 
of Dennis this season the way he has shot the ball to this point boy he had been burning it up coming into this ball game had Dennis 20 or more points in eight of the 10 games coming into this one boy Joe Wolf misses both free throws so Vancouver dodges a bullet there up three and with the rock John Konkak at the table will check in for Wolf at the next intermission. Avent goes to work. He's had a fine game. Turnaround jumper on the baseline. Oh, a tough break for Avent. That thing did everything but drop for him. Brian Shaw. Danny Hideaway. Pull up three. Yes. Woo. Boy, was that ever needed? 22nd timeout now. As Hardaway ties the game with his 32nd point. Can I stop holding my breath now? <laughs> can, I, can I exhale? <laughs> oh boy, that was huge. Penny Hardaway. Holding my breath as he let that one go. Please go down because the Magic need something to happen. And Penny, all bottom. 32 now for Mr. Hardaway. And 42, of course, is his career high. So 87 apiece. Interesting move here by Brian Winters. He's gone a long way without Greg Anthony, his top scorer in this ball game. Moten has been running the offense. Well, he heard. Now, you. Uh, yeah, now he's checking back in. Heard you talking about him. He's gone a long time without Benoit Benjamin, also. So the Magic with Hardaway, Shaw, Anderson, Grant, Konkak, Avent, Scott, Anthony, Reeves, and King for Vancouver. Anthony plays pick and roll with Reeves. They don't give him the ball. They don't have much confidence in him. Anthony, water bug like, fires it up. No, Avent fights loose ball. Got it, laid it in. 24-second violation, no basket. Oh. Big break by the Magic, but or for the Magic, I should say. But it's the defense that we've been calling for all night. A team coming into this ball game, averaging just under 89 points a game. Vancouver, with four minutes left, has 87. Ten to shoot for Brian Shaw. He draws the double. Avent guards Grant. Five to shoot. Shaw loads up. Long fall. Kotkak couldn't get the rebound. He popped it up in the air and Big Country snatched it away. Magic just can't hit a couple of shots in a row. Just 40% on the night. Ten to shoot. King against Anderson. Byron Scott against Shaw. Big Country four to shoot. Three to shoot. Up under left hand. Yes. Big time move by the rookie. So Vancouver at the three minute mark has the lead. 89 87. Hardaway spins baseline. Byron Scott swats it away. Penny on the floor calls timeout. And the Magic will have the ball with six to shoot. And it will be a full timeout as the Magic have expended all of their 20s in the game. Still anybody's matchup. And we'll be right back. 89-87, Vancouver the lead. The Magic have the ball with 2.52 to play on the night. Byron Scott off the Vancouver bench with a season-high tying 18 for the Magic. Dennis Scott, a rare off night for Orlando. And that's why they got Byron in the expansion draft. His leadership, his scoring ability really adds a, a presence to this young team that is just starting out in the Pacific Northwest. When you consider your picks for an expansion team, you have to try to find a way to get a good blend of youth and experience. And you always look for a guy like a Byron Scott, who is a good guy to have on your team, always a positive attitude, at least to my estimation. A positive attitude encourages the young players and then the coaches know when they need experience they can go to them so the magic have to find a way here with six seconds left on the clock to get themselves a good look at the basket penny hardaway might touch it here pretty quickly 
and get it. Nope, they're going to Nick Anderson. He missed fires. Oh, got a lucky bounce and lays it in. Oh, he missed it once, but on the second opportunity, got the lay in. Good that call. helps. Good call by Brian. Nick able to overpower Blue Edwards. But Blue Edwards and Byron Scott, the shooters from the outside. Well, now they go to big country. Two-man game. Big country blocked by Cat. The rookie wanted the whistle. He's not going to get it falling away from the bucket. 2.18 to play. High game at 89. This is where Vancouver faltered last, faltered last time out in New York. They had it tied at 93 there. Penny creates. And Reeves the rebound. Cack takes a swipe at it. And Vancouver can take the lead with two minutes left. Remaining in the corner. They're getting some good minutes for the rookie, Brian Reeves. Boy, are they ever. Usually, Benoit Benjamin would be there, but trying to get Reeves going. Six to shoot. Vancouver turns it over. Horace Grant with the hand. Penny throws Anthony to the floor. Two on Penny. That goes as a turnover. Anthony may have acted a little bit. Yes, he did. Well, here's where you find out what you made of. Vancouver, 130 to play in the game, 89-89. Blue Edwards, 10 to shoot. Tries to penetrate the middle, off-balance shot, barely grazes iron. They've had a couple of shots, partially blocked now. Ryan Shaw to Penny. He'll run the show with plenty of time left. Now they've been going to Nick Anderson a lot on the low post against Blue Edwards. Now he's matched up with Byron Scott. They can't get in the ball. Now they do in traffic. There you go. Scott the reach. And Byron Scott says, look, he scratched me. Here's the mark to prove it. Well, let's see what happens. This is good hard work by Nick Anderson. I don't know how you can complain about it. I mean, I think Nick just outworked him that time using that big body of his on the low post. So give him a lot of credit. He had to find a way to come up with it. The Magic calling his numbers right now. So that's his job. Time since the Magic have had a lead in this ball game. Well, it's 90-89, a minute left. Greg Anthony off balance, hits a deuce, and we welcome those of you around the country on bonus coverage. On TBS, Greg Anthony of Vancouver has given the Grizzlies a one-point lead. 37 seconds left in the game. Chip Carey, Jack Gibbons with you from Orlando. Vancouver has done in this game just what they've wanted to do. Oh, Hardaway at the other end. And Penny Hardaway with the circus shot. He's made a bunch of them here tonight as he just gets points number 32, 3 and 34. But an incredible game tonight in the Orlando Arena. Vancouver shooting 47%. They've held Orlando to just 40% shooting in the game. Penny Hardaway leads all scores with 34 points. The Grizzlies have six players in double figures. Byron Scott leading them with 18 on the night, but Greg Anthony has played another brilliant game. He's their top scorer. He has come on the last six ball games, averaging 18 points a game over that period. And Penny Hardaway, all-star type year he's having with the shot falling down to the ground Penny Hardaway 34 points and give Vancouver a whole bunch of credit in this ball game Chip they have kept it close and now they have a chance at winning this ball game they have an eight game losing streak does Vancouver of course they won their first two ball games they come in the league's lowest scoring team averaging just 89 a night but they've come into Orlando, they've put 91 points on the board. And this was the kind of effort that they have put forth every night for Brian Winter's team. But as an expansion team, Goose, 
they have found out just how hard it is to get over the hump and close the deal and seal the deal. They were close in New York, tied at 93 with 40 seconds left, lost there by three points. Here tonight, they will have the ball down one in Orlando with 29.4 to play. All we need to do is think back just a very few years. <laughs> right. To when the Magic were in this same situation, and regardless of how many times you keep it close, if you continue to lose these close ball games, you just don't have the confidence down the stretch. So they have made enough shots in this game that they feel, and rightly so, so they can win this ball game. They can get two for one here. Heroes of plenty for Vancouver. Byron Scott with 18. Anthony Avent, the former Magic player, traded away with 8.7 boards off the bench. Big country Bryant Reeves, 5.5 rebounds, but more importantly, he's played the final four minutes of this game and has played very, very well. Uh, he's playing for Benoit Benjamin, who has not played all that effectively here tonight. But Byron Scott, the three-point shot is a challenge. And he took it and missed it, and Penny grabs the rebound and is fouled. They took the shot quickly so that they could, if the Magic hit both free throws, get the last shot and maybe take a three to try to tie the game. Well, Byron Scott has had a tremendous game here, Chip. He has shot the ball well, 18 points off the bench for this Vancouver team, 6 of 13 from the field. It's Byron Scott, and you think back a couple years ago to the playoffs, that's where that shot when he was with Indiana came from that beat the Magic. Well, so, flashes of that shot right before the face, and Penny Hardaway misses free throw number one. 34 points for Hardaway tonight. Big shot here, should have missed. <laughs> and it just did trickle home. So Vancouver now will have a final crack with 18.7 left. Orlando's lead is 93-91, and conventional wisdom tells you if you're the visitors, you go for the kill, go for the win on the road. Well, uh, I think that's the thing that uh, Brian Winters wants to do here. Why go for two and take it into overtime and take a chance of losing it? Uh, he will look at his bench understanding that he has two or three very capable three-point shooters, number one being Byron Scott, who has shot the ball well here in this game. Also, Blue Edwards is capable of knocking down shots behind the three-point line. And on a night like tonight, Greg Anthony, who over the last six or seven ball games has played the way they wanted him to play when they drafted him, has shot the ball well. So they have three options very quickly that they can go to. Chris King tonight for the Grizzlies with a career-high 16. Blue Edwards with 11, although he has not scored here in the fourth. Greg Anthony with 11 points. Byron Scott, 18, we told you about. Uh, just a very balanced and impressive attack for Brian Witter's team, who continues to grow by leaps and bounds in situations like you, you can't learn to get over the hump until you're at the hump. And learning how to take over in close games like this, it's a very difficult thing to do on the road, and they're doing it to the team that went to the NBA Finals last year, so that makes the effort even more impressive. Well, the real plus for uh, the Grizzlies, as I see it right now, is they haven't played enough games to understand that expansion teams lose these games more <laughs> right, times than not. Right. So they don't know that yet. So they come out thinking every night, at least until the All-Star break, that, hey, we can win these games, and they play as though they can. Now, the play that has worked uh, extremely well for Vancouver here in this ball game is Byron Scott getting the screen along the baseline from either Anthony Avon at the power forward spot or Bryant Reeves at the center position. Now the Magic have been switching that play. They have gotten smaller with the option to do that coming. If you don't get the switch, you have to make sure that you follow and stay right on the hip of Byron Scott along the baseline. And watch the illegal screen. We've had a lot of those called here tonight. Final 14 seconds. It's win or lose time for Vancouver. Now the they Magic will. have a foul to give, so foul him now before they get it. Byron Scott takes the two, drew the foul with 5.4 left. Well, uh, I, I don't understand why it came to that because you look up at the scoreboard and you have just two fouls in this period. So you foul them before you get into the act of shooting and you take away uh, the option of getting to the free throw line. So Horace Grant over the back, and that's a good call by the official. So the Magic missed a chance there. 
to stop the clock without putting them on the free throw line. Horace Grant with the foul. So Byron Scott, three out of four at the line with 18 points to lead. Vancouver and the home crowd really roots and roars at him. This guy has ice water in his veins. I don't think he's going to miss them both. Well, or I don't think he'll miss any of them. I don't know that he will. He's been there before in the magical ice. So the magic burn, one of their two remaining timeouts here, 93, 92, and perhaps we're looking at overtime here with 5.4 left. Well, and that's probably a big shock <laughs> that it comes to that. Should Byron Scott first of all make and the magic miss on what would be the final shot in regulation. The magic will have another timeout, although I think Brian would be drawing up a play in the magic huddle, Brian Hill as both teams have a Brian as the coach. And if that should happen, Penny Hardaway will get the basketball. I would say Nick Anderson has been called on here in this fourth period from the low post. And then you might see Brian burn another timeout so that you can get the ball in the front court with just 5.4 left. So a couple of options to the Magic. Penny Hardaway would be number one, Nick Anderson number two. And the other thing is, should Baron Scott surprise us all <laughs> and miss this free throw, the rebound has to be gotten right. by the home team here tonight. Vancouver right there with the magic and rebounds. Orlando with 43, 16 of them come on the offensive board. Vancouver tonight with 12 of their 41 on the offensive glass. Our copyrighted program tonight is presented by the authority of the Magic and it's intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the picture, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Magic and Sunshine Network is prohibited. You surprised it's come to this? Well, not really, because coming into this ball game, um, we said the ch real challenge for the Magic was not going to be the Vancouver Grizzlies, the real challenge for the Magic would be themselves. And you have a team in Vancouver that coming into this ball game is averaging just under 89 points a game. They have 93 points here tonight. They are shooting the ball on the season under 43%. They're shooting it at 47% right now. So that tells you the Magic have not been as sharp as they have been in some other games. Byron Scott ties the game, and now the Magic use their final timeout. Byron Scott with 20. 93-93. Isn't life funny? Last Vancouver game they played, they were also tied at 93 before falling in New York. Now with 5.4 seconds left, they're tied in Orlando at 93. But 5.4, Jack, for this Magic team. Getting the ball at half court, I'm sure, is an awful lot of time with which to work. Well, uh, yeah, you're right, uh, Chip. I think uh, for the Magic, two things come into play here. First and foremost, they just burned their final timeout, so they have to get the ball in bounds. They don't have the option of the timeout or the 20. Um, Vancouver has not had a delay a game here, so I'm sure they will use that step out of bounds to try to see what the Magic will do. But I still think as far as plays are concerned for Brian Hill and his Magic team, the first option would probably be to get the ball in the hands of Penny Hardaway. He just won a game uh, a week or so ago down in Miami with the drive to the basket, or against Miami, a drive to the basket to beat the Miami Heat. Penny Hardaway with 34 points, excuse me, 35 points here in this game would be the logical choice. 5.4 seconds left. The crowd here in Orlando looking forward to a Thanksgiving Day feast tomorrow, but not a whole lot of Thanksgiving going on right now. Everybody's a little worried. Fun game tonight. Boy, you, you can't help but root for Vancouver in the sense that you have to admire their effort tonight. They're seriously outgunned here. And they are a big time underdog, but they've really played over their heads. They've played great basketball. Don't have many wins to show for it, but that's really a credit not only to their players, but to their coaching staff and to their entire organization. So we hope the Magic wins tonight, but you, you applaud Vancouver's play tonight.
Chris King at the scores table will come in as well. Let's see who checks out. It'll be Anthony Avent. Oh, that, or, well, it'll be big country Bryant Reed. Yeah, they want to get a more athletic player in, and that's what they're doing here. Once again, uh, the Magic have no timeouts to waste uh, to use here. So there's there's the delay. Nick Anderson coming along the base coming along the baseline. So that might have been a disguised play by the Magic. Horace Grant going down to the baseline. And there's Penny Hardaway. He's got it against Anthony. Three to shoot. Hardaway hard drive leaning. Hang it. Yes. It's over. We've seen him fall away before. That time he took it right to the hole. And the Magic survive at the horn. 95-93. And Vancouver's hearts are broken again. Yeah, you know, these are the games for expansion teams that come the All-Star break, you've seen so many. And you think, not another one. And you lose it, and you lose heart. But they haven't here so far in this season. They didn't tonight. And it's a very disheartening loss, but great for the Magic to pull this one out. Boy, the double clutch by Penny. He got the bounce. He got the bucket. And he breaks Vancouver's heart tonight. 95 to 93. There's your final. Back with more in a moment.